Alfa Romeo Stelvio proves that the impressive engineering used in the brand's Giulia Saloon can also work in more challenging market segments. The premium part of the mid-sized crossover sector is certainly one of those. For customers in this class, this Milanese model promises character and real driving engagement. The Stelvio is an Alfa Romeo first and an SUV second. The Milanese maker wants you to be in no doubt of that. But what exactly might that mean? Today, we're going to find out. In recent years, a variety of manufacturers previously unfamiliar with the SUV segment have had to rather awkwardly take long-established brand values and somehow make them fit into the concept behind this kind of car. Unlike Jaguar, Maserati, Bentley, Rolls-Royce and Lamborghini though, Alfa Romeo has at least made one of these things before. It was called the Matter. It was a Jeep-like 4x4, briefly sold in the early 50s, and it is long forgotten, just like the the Kamal crossover prototype shown in 2003 and other models that the company has made from time to time that have taken it out of its usual sporting comfort zone. The Stelvio though might be a longer remembered alpha foray into the unknown and there are plenty of reasons why. This Milanese model absolutely has to offer something different. After all, if it can't, there's no real reason for customers to bother with it when there are so many other better established alternatives, which is why that Alpha First SUV Second Boast has to be more than just marketing speak if this car is gonna meet expectations and double worldwide sales of the brand over the next five years. Hence, a promising engineering approach based on the stiff, sophisticated Giorgio plan platform pioneered by the universally well-received Julia mid-sized four-door model that uh, Alpha launched in 2016. Now, thanks to a weight gain over that sharp handling saloon restricted to just 200 kilos, the engineers gave themselves a very really decent chance of building into this Stelvio the kind of eager character that you simply wouldn't expect from a crossover contender. Plus, we're promised feel some steering, a tunefully characterful engine soundtrack, and a top model with a Ferrari-derived engine, with a range price starting point that in some cases is thousands below some German rivals. Happy days. And we're expecting the reality of a successful Stelvio sales campaign to be more complicated than that summary makes it sound. Uh, we've already referenced Alpha's previous failure to perform well in market segments outside those it's traditionally occupied. For the long-term sustainability of the brand, it's going to have to break that cycle as part of a fresh approach that starts right here, right now, with this car. The Stelvio has been designed around achieving a goal that few other SUV makers aspire to, that of delivering handling worthy of a real sports car. Now if like us you think that sounds rather ambitious, then you might be reassured to know that most of the engineering here is the same as that used in Alpha's engaging Julia Saloon, including that car's stiff, sophisticated Giorgio platform. But can that model's sharp handling characteristics really be replicated in an SUV with a driving position 190 mils higher? Well, development chief ex-Ferrari man Robert Fideli set himself exactly that challenge. He and his team were certainly aided in this quest by the fundamental rightness that lies beneath this sweeping bodywork. It's almost unheard of for a premium mid-sized SUV of this kind to weigh in at under 1.7 tonnes, but the Stelvio manages to do that comfortably thanks to a structure that's rich in lightweight aluminium. Uh, the bodywork is also exceptionally rigid, that's a crucial requirement for keen handling, and there's also an expensively developed passive damping system to further keep the usual crossover body roll in check. Other attributes include a perfect 50-50 front-to-rear weight balance and a power-to-weight ratio that few rivals can better. On paper, then, this SUV stands at least a sporting chance of developing um, at least something of the kind of driving experience that you'd hope an Alpha might provide. 
And you feel that in the first few hundred yards at the wheel, principally through the steering, which uses exactly the same sharply sensitive rack that features in the Julia. Uh, what you also might feel in the first few hundred yards uh, is that this car is a rather firm riding thing, as perhaps might have been expected from its enthusiast orientated remit. Um, even supposedly quite dynamic class rivals like the Jaguar F Pace and the BMW X3 offer a far more cosseting suspension setup than this. We can't help feeling though that the potential customers who will uh, inevitably be put off by this are probably people who wouldn't have considered a Stelvio anyway. Now if you are prepared to choose something different and try in Italian uh, and you would like to address that ride issue, well then your dealer will suggest that you consider paying extra for the SDC adaptive suspension system. Now that will allow you to vary ride quality to suit your mood and the road surface. In our view, that would be an option well worth having. If you do go for the SDC setup, then that'll work through the settings of the DNA driving mode setup that all Stelvios get to tweak steering feel, uh, throttle response, and the gear change timings of the eight-speed ZF automatic transmission uh, that every version of this Alpha has to have. In our experience, uh, the difference that driving modes tends to make can often be rather difficult to discern, but set in D for dynamic, this car really does feel a good deal more eager and agile, and you don't have to be driving flat flat out with a Maranello mindset to enjoy it. Certainly that setting is infinitely preferable to the two other options, uh, the less focused N for natural selection and for the times when you're feeling a little bit eco-minded, A for advanced efficiency. Advanced efficiency is a mantra that Alpha has certainly stuck to when they were developing the uh, Q4 four-wheel drive system that most Delvio variants will have. It's a setup that always directs 100% of power to the rear unless a lack of traction demands torque redistribution, uh, which can instantly see up to 50% of forward motion channeled through the front wheels. Um, it's a setup that will really come into its own in the uh, twisting Stelvio Pass that this Alpha is named after. And you really feel it working when you're cornering at speed on greasy surfaces. That's particularly if you've paid extra for the optional limited slip differential that'll help get the power down through the bends. The immediacy of response that all this delivers is one of the things that makes this car seem so unlike an SUV, or at least unlike any SUV bar the much pricier Porsche Macan, uh, which you sense was the development benchmark Fidelian and his engineers aspired to in developing this model. The Macan, though, it sells primarily with six-cylinder power, whereas this Alpha, as befits its much lower price point, uh, features a lineup centered around the two four-cylinder power plants, which were a originally developed for the Julia, a 2-litre petrol unit and a 2.2-litre diesel. Engines are, and ought to be, at the heart of any Alfa Romeo, so in developing these two, the brand apparently consulted with various rock musicians to more characteristically tune the noise amplification system, which is supposed to enhance the engine and exhaust note through the stereo speakers. To be honest, the end result of all that effort has been somewhat strangled by Alpha's need to adhere to the industry's increasingly strict emissions regulations. But the fizzy two-litre petrol unit that we're trying here still manages to deliver a more endearing soundtrack than you'll find in any direct rival. Unlike some of this Milanese brand's previous high-revving petrol motors uh, that needed to be thrashed until the car shook if meaningful forward motion was going to be achieved, this one develops its pulling power right down low in the rev range. Yet, it's still charismatic enough to make you want to plant the throttle at every opportunity, accelerating the car with a real sense of occasion. Plus, it's fast. Even in its base 200 HP state of tune, this multi-air engine will propel a Stelvio to 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.2 seconds on the way to 132 miles an hour. If you go for the 280 HP variant that we're trying here, that sprint figure improves to 5.7 seconds. All of which will be interesting, but ultimately irrelevant to the 84% of Stelvio customers who will want one of the 2.2 litre diesel variants. Now, by class standards, this black pump unit isn't especially refined, but it does offer a decent slug of pulling power, uh, at least 450 newton meters of the stuff. So it's well capable of bowling you along at a very decent rate. Uh, the base 180 HP version of that power plant is the only one in the range that can be ordered without the Q4 all wheel drive system. 
Alpha reckons though that most buyers will pay extra for the Q4 package anyway, particularly as it doesn't seem to have any impact on running cost efficiency or performance, uh, which sees the base diesel Stelvio make 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.6 seconds en route to 130 miles an hour. If you go for the uprated 210 HP version of that 2.2 litre diesel model, that only comes in Q4 form. Uh, those figures improve to 6.6 seconds and uh, 134 miles an hour. All four-wheel drive diesel Stelvios can tow up to 2,300 kilos if need be. And finally, although it's not our focus here, we should also brief you on the charms of the top Quadrifoglio high performance variant. Under the bonnet lies a 2.9 litre petrol V6 by Turbo, which is essentially a cut down version of the 4 litre V8, which are used in uh, Maranello's 488 GTB. It develops a thundering 510 HP, and that is enough to storm you to 62 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds. And that's only slightly slower than that Ferrari we just mentioned. And should you find yourself on a track or on a stretch of unrestricted autobahn, it'll keep on powering up to 176 miles an hour. Alpha has thrown all the performance technology it had at that halo model, and that includes active torque vectoring to help get the power down through the bends, um, active suspension which varies the damping and uh, alpha chassis domain control now that connects the different systems to deliver the best setup as the car is being driven plus the dna drive mode system gets an extra race setting for tire smoking starts if you're a Stelvio customer, then the Quadrifoglio variant will probably be your dream ride, and it will almost certainly be beyond your means. Never mind, uh, some aspects of that top model's technology are fitted right across the range. Uh, the powerful drive-by-wire IBS integrated braking system, for example, and even the humblest version of this Alpha can be specified with huge and deliciously emotive Ferrari-derived paddle shifters for the Auto 8 Speeder. Now these paddle shifters click satisfyingly through the ratios and they can both be pulled back simultaneously to select neutral when you cruise up to the traffic light start line. That's just like it is on a 488 GTB. Brilliant. As for the off-piste uh, capability of the SUV remit, uh, well, like many of its rivals, Alfa Romeo has ignored this almost completely. But of course, the Q4 system would be quite up to supplying the tractional needs, which were forced on you by a relatively smooth, muddy track. And rather surprisingly, a hill descent control system is included to ease you down slippery slopes. We can't ever really imagine a Stelvio owner actually using that, though. So let's sum up. If you're in search of a cosseting mid-sized SUV, then this isn't it. But if uh, though you're one of the few buyers wanting a car in this class in which you can really take control, then we think you'll enjoy this Stelvio very much. Translating traditional sporting brand values into the high-riding, squarical shape of an SUV is notoriously difficult. What you don't do is start with a shape approximating to what people expect an SUV to be, and then add familiar company styling cues to it. That's like trying to put jigsaw puzzle pieces together that don't quite fit. Check out an early Porsche Cayenne for evidence of what uh, that kind of approach will lead to. Instead, the styling associated with this kind of car should evolve organically from traditional brand profiling, and that's is exactly what's happened here. Even before you notice the evocative badge on the classic triangular trefoil nose, it's clear that this is a car with a uniquely Italian sense of flair, something that's further emphasized by the long bonnet, the short overhangs, and those muscular haunches. There really is nothing quite like the Stelvio in this segment. This unique heart-shaped front grille with its stylish cross and dragon badge is one of the most recognizable style elements in the automotive world. And it forms a starting point for two seductive creases that flow up into this sweeping bonnet. Concentrate on that rather than on the unfortunate fact that like so many contemporary Alphas, the front end of this one is somewhat disfigured by the necessity of having to fit a clumsy great British number plate. Nevertheless, this SUV is a strikingly thing and it has real overtaking presence and that's emphasized by these huge lower intakes with their black lattice grills. Um, the swept back headlamps here with their incorporated LED daytime running lights they can be ordered with uh, these optional by Xenon beams although not with the full LED technology that you will find in Rivals. 
In profile, the Stelvio is more jacked up five door hatch than SUV with this swept back windscreen, curvy short roof line, and its power packed rear haunches, and a tailgate that's more steeply raked than you'd expect from a crossover. In other words, the aim behind this design replicates that of the drive dynamics. In class context, it's far more like a Porsche Macan than, say, an Audi Q5 or a Mercedes GLC. A confident central swage line flows through the door handles. Uh, and it has an upward slant like that of this lower crease and that separates wheel arches that house rims between 17 and 20 inches in size. Choose the right ones. Uh, we've got 20 inch V-spoke style rims here embellished with evocative red calipers and your car really will stand out. You might think the rear to be perhaps less immediately distinctive, but it's still very neatly styled with slim LED tail lights, a neat roof spoiler, and this integrated lower diffuser style panel. That looks great when it incorporates these smart big bore corner exhausts. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see, namely the Giorgio platform that's also used by the brand's Julia Saloon, and which will additionally form the basis for another larger Alpha luxury model. Makes extensive use of lightweight materials as indeed does the whole vehicle structure. Uh, the drive shaft is made of carbon fibre, the rear cross member features aluminium composite and the doors, uh, the wings, the engine and the suspension are all fashioned from pure aluminium. That's all very sophisticated and it explains why this car is so much lighter than most of its segment rivals. It tips the scales at between 100 and 200 kilos lighter than obvious segment containers temporaries. Right, let's take a seat at the wheel. Now, Alpha's engineers have succeeded in making the Stelvio not much like an SUV to drive, and the relative normality of this driving position makes it not much like an SUV to sit in either. Now, if you like the first characteristic, then you'll probably also be in favour of the second, but there's plenty of headroom space so as to adjust your seat upwards if you do prefer a slightly loftier perch. Now, Alphas feel great with stitched leather upholstery, and there can be plenty of it if you're trimming budget it will permit. And that's as part of a cockpit that, to some extent at least, does succeed in combining classic Alpha charisma with modern functionality. Although there are a few caveats that we'll come on to in a minute. Um, there's certainly plenty to like. Deeply cowled dials, a grippy, thin-rimmed three-spoke wheel, splashes of aluminium, and on most models, these huge, evocative aluminium gear change paddles that look as if they were originally designed for a Ferrari, and they probably were. Uh, they are optional at the foot of the range, but we think you simply have to have them. The starter button is positioned at 7 o'clock just off the centre of the steering wheel, and that's exactly as it would be in a 488 GTB V8. And the seats position and grip you with real purpose. I mean, if Marinello were ever to try to sell a car in this sector, this, you feel, is what it would be like. Situated high up in the middle of the dash is a large area of plain satin black that once you fire up the ignition turns out to be a borderless multimedia screen and that'll be 8.8 .8 inches in size. And this um, Alfa Romeo Connect setup provides the usual DAB radio, phone and 3D navigational options plus a useful split screen function. And that's all accessible via this circular dial down here below the gear stick. The TomTom derived graphics used though uh, lack the classiness of rival German setups and there's nothing like the depth of media connectivity that you'll now get in a rival Audi, BMW, Mercedes or Jaguar. I mean if Alpha is going to be serious about this sector it needs to catch up in this regard and quickly. Anything that this monitor can't tell you will probably be covered off by the colour TFT display, which is provided between these evocative instrument dials. Now, this will be seven inches in size, as long as you've avoided entry-level trim. Um, trip computer, fuel meter, and digital speedometer options are all available. To get those, you click on the end of this column stalk. And it's at this point uh, that the caveats we alluded to earlier begin to become apparent. It's not just that the stalk is... Um, 
um, well, like much of the switch gear, quite cheaply fashioned and very clearly borrowed from cheaper Fiat Group products. It also exhibits um, a lot of play in its positioning, and that's also the case with the uh, various cheap feeling dials that are down here around the gear stick. So as a result, whenever you operate any of these controls, there is a small but quite significant dilution of the ambiance of quality that Alpha is presumably striving so hard to achieve with this car. There's so much else that's seductive about this cabin though that you quickly find yourself seeking excuses to forgive oversights of that kind. And annoyances like the lower quality plastics used further down the dash, uh, the low rent quality gear stick, and the awkward over prominent positioning of this central USB port below the ventilation controls. Lovely little touches like the polished alpha door sill plates, the round jet turbine style corner air vents, and the rich lining used in the glove box do help redeem things but you won't get a complete feel for what's really possible here if you're buying in at the foot of the range and you can't afford to dress the interior up a little with options if you can add a bit of embellishment though um, say courtesy of one of the luxury lusso packs with their sumptuous oak or walnut trim it can look absolutely gorgeous and maserati like what else? Uh, well, a wide range of seat adjustability means that most drivers should be able to get comfortable, although there really ought to be a little more uh, reach adjustment for the steering wheel. As to what you can see through it, uh, well, you can't have the fully digital instrument binnacle that you will find in many rivals, but that's a good thing in this case. I mean, if you prefer a set of anodyne TFT graphics to a rev counter dial that says Giri rather than RPM, then we'd suggest that little else about this Alpha is likely to interest you. Um, ergonomics, well, visibility forwards is fine, courtesy of relatively thin A-pillars, but it's a different story when you're trying to look over your shoulder, thanks to the small rear screen and the thick uh, rear three-quarter body panels. As a result, the standard rear parking sensors are essential, and you might want to embellish those with an optional rear view camera. That annoyingly does have a rather restricted screen display size, though. Stowage space, well, that manages to be acceptable, although the illuminated door pockets and the glove box are both small and there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses. On the plus side, though, there are twin cup holders concealed by this smart sliding panel at the base of the centre stack here, and you get a compartment by the driver's right knee, and that's along with neat ticket clips in the inside of the driver's sun visor. This central lidded stowage cubby uh, between the seats includes a lift-out compartment along with USB and aux in points. Uh, and in addition, if you tick the right boxes, this box can also be cooled and it can feature a wireless charging mat. Now, when it's time to take a seat in the rear, taller folk might find access hindered a little by this swept back roof line. Still, uh, the rear door does open decently wide. And once inside, there's a lot more headroom than the sleek silhouette previously led you to expect. Legroom, though, isn't quite as good as in some direct rivals, although it is better than in a Porsche Macan. And a couple of tall folk sat behind a lanky driver will find their knees very close indeed to the scalloped cutouts uh, that are indented into the front seat backs. Uh, because of this relatively high centre transmission tunnel, you will struggle to accommodate three adults comfortably for any real distance. Still, as in the front, forget the sensibility and just admire the charisma. These lovely silver-trimmed twin central eyeball vents and the stitched door cards. Practicalities include seat back nets and twin cup holders in this fold-down armrest. And unlike many of its rivals, Alpha hasn't forgotten to provide rear seat folk with a USB port. In fact, there are two. And now the door bins are severely restricted in size by the speakers, but there is room in those for a little bottle of water. Finally, let's take a look in the boot, accessible via a standard powered tailgate. 
That opens to reveal a 480 litre capacity. Now that improves on what you'll get in a Porsche Macan or a Volvo XC60, but it is a little smaller than other more obvious German class rivals. Uh, there's no adjustable height boot floor and there's no space beneath the cargo base if wisely you've specified this optional spare wheel. Still, the four chromed tie down tethers look nice. Uh, there are bag hooks on either side. Uh, there's a 12 volt socket on the left and a useful storage tray here on the right. You get seat back release catches too, but there's not much point in having those because uh, the backrests don't drop properly once the catches are released, so you end up having to manually push them forward anyway. Um, the backrest uh, folds in a useful 40-20-40 split so that long items like skis can be pushed through into the cabin without disturbing uh, rear seat passengers. When everything's flat, or flattish anyway, you'll find 1600 litres of space available to you and that is the same as the much boxier looking Mercedes GLC. To succeed, the Stelvio needs to be smarter, more engaging, and more interesting than its premium rivals. But it would also help if it was slightly more affordable too. Is it? Well, let's see. Uh, the core lineup is based around two primary engines. Those from the Alfisti, who can bring themselves to consider an SUV, will naturally gravitate towards the two litre turbo petrol unit. That's only available with the brand's Q4 all wheel drive system. And it comes with either 200 HP or in the 280 HP form we're trying here. Prices started around 35,000 pounds for the 200 HP version. This 280 HP model is only available further up the range, hence asking prices here uh, start at around £44,000. Uh, most models in this segment though still sell with diesel power and sure enough the Milanese maker expects that 84% of Stelvio sales will be of models fueling from the black pump. A 2.2 litre diesel is provided for this purpose and if you choose it in its lower powered 180 HP guys there's a possibility to save yourself £1,500 and get that diesel alpha in a purely rear driven form at a starting price which from launch was just over £34,000. Most buyers will want the Q4 system though and you have to have it if you want that 2.2 litre diesel in its more potent 210 HP state of tune and that's a power plant price from around £39,000. There are four core trim levels, base Stelvio, uh, then Super, Speciale, and the Milano Edizione variant we're trying here. Prices will range up to just over £45,000 if you choose yourself a top 2-litre petrol or 2.2-litre diesel engine derivative, which is fully kitted out. From that point, there's a big jump up to the £70,000 fee required for ownership of the top Quadrifoglio flagship variant with its potent 2.9-litre V6 biturbo Ferrari derived 510 HP petrol engine. But let's get back to trying to answer the question we began with. How engaging will potential mid-sized SUV segment buyers find this product to be when they start to compare it to better established premium rivals? Well, let's see. If we turn first to the Stelvio variant that the majority of likely buyers will want, that 2.2 litre diesel Q4 all-wheel drive, we find that the least expensive version costs a fraction more than equivalent Jaguar F-Pace and Mercedes GLC models, but it's slightly faster and it's more economic than both of them. Plus, it's significantly cleaner, which could count on your tax return. As for other key rivals, well, that base diesel all-wheel drive Alpha is about £1,000 cheaper than a comparable Audi Q5 2.0-litre TDI, and it's about £2,000 cheaper than an equivalent BMW X3 20D, with both of those Teutonic alternatives, again, being a bit slower and a little pricier to run. On paper, a better class alternative to a base diesel Stelvio is the significantly cheaper Volvo XC60 D4, but we can't really see that car appealing to a typical Alfa customer. Uh, this Alfa Romeo's proposition looks even stronger if you're happy to do without four-wheel drive in that most affordable 180 HP diesel variant. The Jaguar's F-Pace is the only other model in this segment that can offer two-wheel drive to diesel buyers, and that car's priced £3,000 higher, and it costs significantly more to run. Now, we also think that the 210 HP performance diesel Stelvio model looks like a decent buy. Uh, BMW and Audi can't offer anything quite the same. It's quicker and far 
more interesting than a similarly priced Mercedes GLC 250D and it undercuts rival high-powered four-cylinder Jaguar F-Pace and Volvo XC60 diesel variants by a massive amount. Plus, it virtually matches the kind of performance that you'd have to pay around £10,000 more for in a Porsche Macan S diesel while being considerably cheaper to run. If you switch your focus to petrol power, then you're even more likely to be charmed by this Alpha because there really aren't too many direct alternatives. Um, Mercedes, for example, doesn't offer any green pump fuel models in the mainstream part of their GLC lineup. Uh, the only direct rival that we can think of to the entry level Stelvio 2 litre petrol 200 HP Q4 model is BMW's X3 2 litre i, and that's slower and it costs over £5,000 more. As for the more potent Stelvio 2 litre petrol 280 HP Q4 variant that we're trying here, well, that's most likely to be sold in its £44,000 Speciale trim, in which case uh, the main alternatives would be an Audi Q5 2 litre TFSI S line, a Volvo XC60 T5R design, and a Jaguar F Pace 2 litre 250 PS R Sport. Uh, these three rivals are priced at around about the same level as this Alpha, but they're all slightly slower and they'll all cost a little more to run. So let's finish our perusal of likely rivals with a brief mention of that fire-breathing 510 HP Quadrifoglio flagship Stelvio variant we referenced earlier. Uh, now its most direct competitor is the Mercedes-AMG GLC 4MATIC Plus S. And that also gives you 510 HP, but it costs around £9,000 more. Uh, there is also the Jaguar F-Pace SVR. That'll give you 550 HP, but that costs £5,000 more. A competitor to this, similarly priced, is the the Porsche Macan Turbo Performance Pack model, but that contender can only muster 440 HP. And stats like that matter when you're spending £70,000 on a mid-sized SUV. And so will the Ferrari heritage of the top Stelvio's V6 by turbo engine. Our focus here, though, is on more conventional Stelvio models. And if, having considered the alternatives, that is what you're drawn towards, then you're going to need to know just how generous Alfa Romeo has been with that standard specification. So let's take a look at that now. Now, it is disappointing to find that across the range, you do have to pay extra for features that really ought to be standard. Um, I'm talking here about roof rails, a space saver spare wheel, metallic paint, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Otherwise, though, um, pretty much all the executive basics are included with the least expensive trim level. And that's simply known as Stelvio. Uh, at this entry point in the lineup, you'll find things like 17-inch 10-spoke alloy wheels, um, auto headlamps and wipers, LED tail lamps, an alarm, a uh, powered tailgate, rear parking sensors, and a double lateral chrome exhaust pipe. Inside, there's dual zone climate control, cruise control, and the brand's DNA driving mode system, which allows you to set the steering, the throttle, and the gear change parameters to suit your personal preferences. Media features are taken care of by an Alpha Connect infotainment system, and that includes an eight-speaker DAB audio setup with Bluetooth, and it works via an 8.8-inch center dash display. Most Stelvio owners, though, are going to want to progress a little further up the range, probably to the super trim level that tends to be most popular. Now, at this level in the lineup, you get larger 18-inch five-spoke alloy wheels and front parking sensors. Inside, a combination of leather and cloth covers the seats, plus there's a two-tone leather dashboard. Uh, the driver information display in the dash, that's upgraded to seven inches in size, uh, while the infotainment setup gains 3D satellite navigation. Now, if you want to sportier look and feel than the more dynamic looking Speciale variants beckon. These feature more dynamic looks courtesy of 19 inch 10 spoke alloy wheels with red brake calipers, by xenon headlights and chromed window surrounds. Plus at this level you get uh, power folding mirrors and on the diesel models LED projection front fog lights. Uh, inside Speciale spec entitles you to leather upholstery, lovely metal gear shift puddles behind the sports leather stitch heated steering wheel, aluminium pedals, an electric chromic rear view mirror, uh, aluminium trim on the tunnel cover and the front doors, plus heated six-way powered seats with four-way powered lumbar support. 
For this test though, we've gone a step further and got ourselves fully loaded Milano Edizione trim. This gets you these cool 20 inch V-spoke alloy wheels, black gloss window surrounds with rear privacy glass, keyless entry and an infrared thermic windscreen. Inside at this level, uh, the leather seats are of the sports variety and they feature powered lumbar adjustment. Uh, there's an uprated air quality system, there's a cord center armrest, there's a rear view camera and a sound theater pack with ambient lighting and an upgraded 10 speaker audio system. And finally, let's touch on the V6 Biturbo Quadrifolio variant, which, as you'd expect from its exalted price tag, comes with its own unique specification. Now, that encompasses unique 20-inch alloy wheels and quad exhausts poking out of the restyled rear diffuser. Active torque vectoring helps get the power down through the bends. Active suspension varies the damping. And Alpha chassis domain control connects the different systems to deliver the best setup as the car's being driven. Inside, the upholstery features a lovely leather and Alcantara combination, plus there is stitched leather on the dashboard and the door tops, there's carbon fibre trim, and as part of the DNA driving mode controller, there's an extra race mode for Ferrari-style starts. On to options, uh, and that's an important section because in our view, there are a few boxes that budget permitting, it would be really good for prospective Stelvio bars to be able to tick. Uh, the first one that we'd want is Alpha's SDC active suspension, and that works through, uh, through the uh, DNA driving mode system, and it's particularly effective in countering the effects of this model's otherwise rather firm ride. Uh, there are also three other must-haves, uh, the aluminium gear shift paddles that you'll have to pay extra for, on the base and the super variants, um, the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone mirroring system, and the compact spare tyre, without which you'll be stuck with Alpha's fix and go repair kit in the event of a puncture. If you have any further budget to spare, it'll make a big difference to the look and feel of the cabin if you can stretch to one of the optional Lusso packs uh, available with two kinds of wood trim, either walnut or silverwood grey oak. Uh, a Lusso pack will also embellish lower order Stelvio variants with a number of the niceties that are fitted to the top spec models. So things like uh, chromed window surrounds, eight-way electric adjustment for the front chairs, uh, a luxury heated steering wheel, power folding mirrors, and a seven inch TFT instrument cluster display. Now, if you can't stretch to a Lusso pack and you've opted for mid-range Speciale trim, uh, then an optional sport pack interior package will give you seat and steering wheel upgrades. Now, if none of those optional packs appeal, then full leather upholstery can be ordered separately. Uh, popular colors are black, red, and mocha. If you've opted for a Stelvio variant lower down the range, you might want to add in a power seats pack. That'll give you power adjustment for the front seats and a cold weather pack. That includes heat for the front seats, uh, for the steering wheel and for the windscreen washer nozzles. Uh, what else? Well, you're certainly going to want to get the exterior look of this car right. Um, now, if you don't want your Stelvio painted in this solid alpha red finish, then you can pay extra for solid alpha white or a range of metallic shades. This top Milano Edizione derivative also gets extra Misano blue and Trofeo white options too. And of course, there's a wide range of alloy wheel designs in sizes from 17 to 19 inches. Individual rim availability depends on the version that you've settled for. Now let's stay on the outside of the car. You could order rear privacy glass, uh, a pricey powered sunroof and aluminium roof rails. Or perhaps you'd prefer brake calipers painted in red, black or yellow. Further perusal of the options list uh, reveals the opportunity of selecting from different extra cost packs. Uh, a convenience pack will give you keyless entry, door handle lights, a cooled central armrest box and an infrared a thermic windscreen. Uh, you could also look at a lighting pack that includes bi-xenon headlights, adaptive front lighting so that the beams turn with the bends, um, headlamp washers and for the diesel models projector LED front fog lamps. Uh, we would also be tempted by the sound theatre pack by Harman Kardon. Now that gives you a 900 watt 12 channel 14 speaker audio setup plus ambient interior lighting. 
As for other things, well, serious drivers may want to look at the Firma Alpha dynamic suspension setup that features frequency selective damping. Uh, we'd be more interested though in the limited slip differential option that helps to get traction down when you're powering out of tight corners. As for practicalities, well, a cargo net for the boot would be useful and you'll need to pay extra for a trunk adjustable rail to go with that. Uh, you can also pay extra for a 230 volt socket in the cargo area if you want it and a rear parking camera is available too and you will probably want that if you add in the optional rear tow hitch. Um, on the entry level model you'll have to pay extra for the larger 7 inch instrument binnacle display and the Alpha Connect 3D nav infotainment package and that will give you the bigger 8.8 .8 inch center dash screen but rather than finding more on an entry level Stelvio for those features it would make more sense to trade up to a super trimmed variant and that has those as standard. Enough with luxury extras, let's get on to the safety stuff. Every Stelvio model comes with no less than nine airbags, twin front and curtain bags, uh, side bags for the front and rear seat passengers, plus a driver's knee bag. Plus, of course, there are all the usual aids for traction and stability control, along, of course, with ABS, part of a clever IBS integrated braking system. And that's a clever setup that uh, takes the usual vacuum brake booster and replaces it with a system that uses an electric motor to build pressure to aid braking. Even more importantly, should all of these features fail to prevent you from having an accident then you'll be protected by what is arguably the strongest body shell available in the segment with rigidity improved by the use of advanced materials like carbon fiber aluminium and aluminium composite as is now common in this segment, this Alpha comes with an autonomous braking system made up in this case of forward collision warning combined with autonomous emergency braking. Now as usual with these kinds of packages, this one uses radar sensors and a forward camera to scan the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive, in this case at speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. Now if something's detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, lane departure warning is also included and that alerts you if you drift over highway lane markings. Uh, if you want to go further with camera-driven safety features, then you'll need a Stelvio variant fitted with the Driver's Assistance Pack Plus package. Now, this can't be held on the base model. It's optional on the Super variant, and it's standard further up the range. As for what you get, well, along with a rear-view camera, um, all-round parking sensors, and an anti-dazzle electrochromic coating for the wing mirrors and the rear-view mirror, uh, this pack also gives you three further camera-driven safety features. So there's automatic high beam assist and that will automatically dip your headlights for you at night. There's a blind spot detection system and that works on the move to warn you if you're just about to dangerously pull out to overtake when there's uh, another vehicle in your blind spot. And finally, rear cross path detection. That will alert you of oncoming traffic if you're reversing out of a parking space. You'd expect the lightweight structure that does so much to aid this Stelvio's handling agility to also pay big dividends when it comes to running cost efficiency, and that is pretty much how it turns out. Thanks to a sophisticated Giorgio platform and a high-tech body structure, which, as we've said earlier on in this film, incorporates copious use of carbon fiber, aluminium, and aluminium composite, this Stelvio was launched as the lightest car in its segment. Uh, to be specific, the volume Q4 180 HP diesel version is 111 kilos lighter than an equivalent Audi Q5 and a massive 186 kilos lighter than a comparable Mercedes GLC. Given all that, you might expect this Alpha's advantage over its competitors to be more substantial than it actually turns out to be. Still, the important thing is that this Stelvio is there or thereabouts in terms of its efficiency showing uh, with both 180 and 210 HP versions of the 2.2 litre four-cylinder diesel uh, managing identical fuel returns, 58.9 mpg on the combined cycle. Uh, this should give you a range of around 530 miles from the 64 litre fuel tank 
Now that is only a fractional improvement on the kinds of readings that you'll get from obvious rivals, but the CO2 result is better. 124 grams per kilometre for the 180 HP model and 127 grams per kilometre for the 210 HP variant. For reference, rival Audi Q5 and BMW X3 rivals are up at 132 grams per kilometre. Those who prefer to fuel their Stelvio from the unleaded pump will find that both the 200 HP and 280 HP versions of the 2 litre turbo petrol engine deliver a combined cycle economy of 40.4 mpg and a CO2 return of 161 grams per kilometre. As for the top 2.9 litre V6 by turbo quadrifolio high performance variant, well, no one would expect that to be a paragon of frugality, but thanks to a cylinder deactivation system that cuts in under light throttle loads, uh, it actually doesn't do too badly. Its figures 31.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 210 grams per kilometre of CO2 are way better than you'll get in the rival Mercedes AMG GLC 63S. A range of other factors play their part in helping the various Stelvio models deliver on those numbers. This Alpha's efficient 8-speed ZF Auto gearbox contributes. Uh, it uses its many ratios to continually propel the car in the most efficient way possible. In addition, of course, there is the usual automatic start and stop system to switch the engine off when you're at a standstill in traffic. Plus, of course, you all have to do your part. Uh, the figures quoted assume selection of the A or advanced efficiency DNA system system driving mode, which softens off the throttle response and gives better fuel consumption. There is a graphical fuel consumption display in the instrument binnacle TFT radout, and there's an efficient drive eco coaching setup on the center dash infotainment screen, uh, which will grade your frugality based on three criteria. Um, those are acceleration, deceleration, and gear changing, and it gives you ratings in each area and an overall eco score. Okay, so what else do you need to know about the running costs of this Italian contender? Well, it comes with a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, and that includes roadside assistance for the same length of time, uh, should you be unlucky enough to break down. Um, it's not very likely that you will. Uh, despite what some people might assume about Alfa Romeo, uh, customer surveys suggest that the brand's reliability record is no worse than that of its German rivals. Routine maintenance, that comes around every 9,000 miles for the petrol powered models, uh, while diesel versions of this car require a dealer visit every 12,000 miles. Uh, you can monitor your Stelvio's progress in this regard via a maintenance screen in the center dash monitor's car status section, and you can uh, spread the cost of any required work by opting for the Easy Care servicing plan, and that runs from one to five years. It includes uh, the cost of all labor, parts, and fluids, so you won't be landed with any unexpected bills. As for the all-important question of depreciation, well, rather surprisingly, the figures being predicted here are the best in the class. According to independent experts CAP, residual values of between 40 to 44 percent are possible over a typical three-year and 60,000-mile period. Uh, the final cost consideration is insurance, of course. That's another area where you might be surprised to find that the Stelvio performs very well against its rivals. Uh, the 2-litre petrol 200 HP variant sits in group 30, while this 280 HP version sits in group 36. Uh, of the diesel models and the 180 HP 2.2 litre alpha is in group 29 in rear driven form or in group 30 or 31 in Q4 guys. Meanwhile, the 210 HP version sits in either group 31 or 33 and that depends on the variant. Alfa Romeos tend to offer an endearing, refreshing, but sometimes slightly confusing mix of virtues. And this one's no different. You kind of feel for the Milanese maker here because in developing this car, it was caught awkwardly between the conflicting expectations of brand and market segment. Priorities for buyers browsing in the mid-sized premium SUV sector tend to lie in comfort-orientated drive dynamics, but that is not a confection that Alpha can be seen to be offering without compromising its core values. So the company has gone the other way and delivered to us a contender that's more lively and involving than any of its direct rivals, aside perhaps from the far pricier Porsche Macan. The flip side of this, though, is that customers will need to be happy with a slightly firmer quality of ride. 
we rather wonder how many of them will be. Now, you could also point out that customers in search of desirable driving dynamics and a versatile, spacious model of this size would be better served by a similarly priced, performance oriented estate. It's a valid argument, but people have been making valid arguments against SUV purchase for a very long time now, while sales in this sector just keep on growing. People want cars like this, and if BMW, Jaguar, and Porsche can all make them, Alpha needs to as well. We're impressed by the fact that in meeting this demand, this Italian maker has resisted the temptation to merely copy its rivals. And we're encouraged by the way that so many of the company's brand values have survived the transition into the crossover class. It really is an Alpha first and an SUV second. True, as we said when testing this model's Julia Saloon Stablemate, this is far from being the perfected finished article, the kind of car that you get if you went for a Q5, an X3, an F-Pace or a Mercedes GLC in this segment. It's not quite as quiet or as well finished inside as those competitors and those are issues that might drive some potential buyers back into the arms of those more established brands with their understated air of superiority. Others, though, might rightly conclude that they never expected an Alpha to be perfect and that this one is a first attempt at modern SUV design that gets closer to the segment standard than almost anyone could have expected. Which is just as well because this Italian brand's future will probably depend on just how successful it can be in building cars of this kind. To sell, the models in question will need to be as agile, striking and idiosyncratic as this one, but perhaps even more polished in terms of ride and quality. For the time being though, the Stelvio represents an impressive step in the right direction that makes many of its rivals seem, well, rather one-dimensional. We like it for that. You may well do too.